The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Chastity Davis. Don't be fooled by my name. The only thing I abstain from is your bullshit. Jessica Riley. Where I come from, money can buy you anything, but I'll take the garbage plate. Seiran Hayati. In Sweden, we have ABBA, IKEA, and if you mess with me, some other four-letter words. Kelly Payfer. I may be from Down Under, but don't ever underestimate me. Richie D. If you can't be cool, you can't be with Caduce. Megan Shaw. I may be a mom. Model, but I'll never be your model minority. Becca Simon. It gets icy where I'm from, so you know I'll bring the heat. Jill Hirsch. Your petty drama can't take this warrior down. Jamie Allrunner. Where I come from, we're known for our great lakes, but I'm just known for my great ass. Sarah Gibbs. You may not like the cut of my jib, but that's what you get from Sarah Gibbs. Maria M. Where I'm from, they sing God Save the Queen, so I guess you can call me a god. Jill Walsh. I made it up this hill myself, and I'll kick any jack off. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and they're not even on my payroll. John Friedman. Diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is. Sarah Watskins Bilstein. Playtime is over. This mama means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist pumping, this Jersey girl brings the party. Amanda Agosti. Everything is bigger in Texas and my heart is no exception. Tracy Masters. When you're the master of your own destiny, no one can ever take you down. Marl Farsi. Reading is fundamental and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Newman. My presence is a gift, so remember the thank you note. Lola Del Rio. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets and I get it all. Ade Adedoko. It may look like I'm stirring the pot, but I'm actually just smoking. Deepa Kanapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Jada. People are intimidated by my great success and my great ass. Naveen Jonathan. I'll give you the shirt off my back and also my unsolicited opinion. Adil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Trinity Subramaniam. I have four degrees and eight syllables and zero fucks to give. Beth Bayer. The secret to my success is staying out of your BS. Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shame. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. Brianna Tony. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there. And lastly, Tanisha. While others are turning tables, I'm dancing on them. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. another episode of the reality is um as promised today is just going to be about summer house uh there's so much to say about this reunion um first of all i just don't understand again these sets that they're putting together it looks like an old pure one imports does it not it looks like the wayfair summer catalog okay it just looks bananas and it's so cheap that even sierra owns the rug from it um the looks of this reunion are really all over the place. I mean, we talked about it a little bit on our Instagram, but like what I don't understand is like how it there's like no consistency. Like it looks like, you know, I think I would say probably Lindsay's like the most formally dressed and then um Paige is just in a tank top and a skirt. She looks like she just washed her hair, which I guess is like the Luke these days, but I just like don't understand it. And also Paige, it doesn't matter what she wore because she just, the thing that she wore the loudest was the sourpuss look on her face. Um, Amanda looked like she was um, very much giving the way that we stupidly dressed in the early 2000s. Um, and yeah, it was just like a mishmash. I feel like Danielle, okay, listen guys, Danielle was teetering for me on the edge of Shannon Bedore and her like Austin Powers 70s look like certainly it was not that look but it was very close to being on the edge 
of that look. Like the shoes were weird. The hair was a lot. The makeup was crazy. The makeup was the craziest on Kyle. Kyle has the same spray tan that I would say maybe like John Barlow did. Like he's just, it's like all orange. Like his hair, his face, it's just all orange. It's just so strange. He has this like bizarre haircut. Like why does this 45 year old man have like a mullet rat tail that he's, he's proud of? I just, I didn't love it. Also the seating was very interesting and clearly the reason why Paige was being such a sourpuss. She is sitting on a couch with Lindsay and Carl purposely just to be for her to be uncomfortable. And if you notice, like the later on, she does talk about it, but Paige is the best at whispering on the side. That's why Paige kills it on the confessionals. That's why Paige does some of her best work laying in a bed, you know, whispering with whomever she's sharing a bed with. That is what Paige is good at. That's why she's good at eavesdropping. Like she likes to be on the side. She's not actually going to say anything to anybody's face. It's very rare that she ever really does. But this is why Paige is mad is because where she's sitting on her side of the couch, she can't actually whisper to anybody. She can't make faces at anybody. She can't do anything. That's what she did all last season on the reunion. But the reunion starts and Andy is like obviously very like, I wouldn't say he's formal, but he's he does his shtick a certain way when it's just housewives. But <laughs> around the summer house people, he's always like, hey guys, I'm Lucy Goosey Andy Cohen. Let's go. Like he just, <laughs> he acts like, your gym teacher in high school who you were like fairly certain was fucking a student or wanted to fuck a student, but probably uh, shouldn't have been. I mean, nobody, no high school teacher should be fucking anybody. Let me just make that clear. He, He gives me the energy of a gym teacher who would show up after graduation to buy the kids alcohol because he is no longer their teacher. Do you know what I mean? That is the energy that Andy gives me. And that guy is a loser. So, um, Anyway, that's what he may remind me of. Everyone's getting seated and Andy is, he says to Paige that he has higher hopes for her than Craig at reunions, which I thought was, you know, chef's kiss of foreshadowing. Um, they ask, it starts off and the first thing they start talking about is Alex and what's more nerve wracking the reunion or making out with Sierra and we get like the one Alex flashback that we could have had like it's almost like we got Alex out of the way We're like all right we got this guy out of the way we don't have to do any more callbacks to anything he did we don't have to show any of his turkey or his eggs or his protein count or whatever um they are going around they do get to Luke and there's a joke made about you know juke tapping more than just maple trees And I just want to put a paperclip in that because I think that that's very interesting for later on when they start slut shaming Lindsay, right? Like we're all saying hello to everybody, all this stuff. Nobody's saying anything about Luke fucking a million women or maple trees or whatever it is that he's trying to say. We also get footage of the stupid footage of Andy in the summer house being disgusted. I mean, again... Andy, you don't belong there, okay? And he, (laughs) even in the show, like even in the footage, he kind of rolls in so strange. It's just, he's got this weird like chest out energy of like, oh, what are you guys up? It's like a weird like, again, it reminds me of the guy who graduated seven years ago but still shows up to high school parties. It just gives me big time loser. Um, they finally get to asking questions to the cast. And the first thing they start to talk about is the cleanliness issue because Andy says that the house stank. And they ask Carl if he gets mad that Paige and Sierra don't clean. And he's like, yeah, it's annoying. And Paige and Sierra claim that they have helped and everyone's pretty much like, "Mm, no. Um, then we somehow get to talking about Kyle's boner over Lindsay and how she once shared that she munched a box. And like, they're they're like, like, it's just strange because Amanda says like, oh, if it's true, then, you know, if that's what Kyle, that if that's what gets Kyle's dick working for me, then sure, why not? Like, I don't know. It was just so strange. Like suddenly Kyle has erectile dysfunction and we're all joking about it. And it was 
quite not clear. It was like, does Kyle have erectile dysfunction or does the wind make him horny? I'm not sure. But it was just so strange because again, it seemed like a question that came out of nowhere. Like, we didn't have this as a storyline. Like there was enough shit that happened that we don't need to be talking about one random time that Kyle said he had a big time boner because Lindsay hooked up with a woman. It just was so strange. It almost was like Andy wanted to talk about Kyle's dick and this was how he could do it. Then obviously we get into the meat and potatoes, which is Lindsay's hot hub summer. The video clip starts with Lindsay's miscarriage and then her hooking up with people and then it ends on Paige calling Lindsay's activities a brothel and even the way that like it's framed it's like oh from a miscarriage to hooking up with everyone it's just like the whole thing just felt like really clunky and inappropriate and laced in misogyny and this like weird patriarchal belief that we need to protect a woman's tender womb you know like it just kind of gave me this feeling of like oh like you know Lindsay was such a mess in the beginning of the season she had a miscarriage and then she just went around and fucked whoever because she didn't care and it just like it just felt like we don't need to even be mapping these two situations together you know that's the thing I think that really bothered me about it is that like a miscarriage can happen for many many reasons and it's a very painful experience and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how she was continuing to act the rest of the summer those two things don't really have to do with each other and I'm gonna get more into why it really bothered me later but they ask um I wrote Craig but that's not true. They ask uh, Carl how he felt watching all this. And he said watching it back together was definitely really difficult. But he's really proud of Lindsay for putting her honesty out as always. When they go ahead and ask the rest of the cast, Paige is saying that her eyebrows were raised the most over Hot Hub Summer, Hot Hub Summer because she just felt like Lindsay was acting very differently. And then obviously we get into this whole thing about the double standard of Luke versus Lindsay. And when they start to get into this, Paige has the fucking nerve to say, well, Luke didn't have a miscarriage. And at this point, I nearly threw my phone across the room because I was watching this on my phone. Paige is so uncomfortable, she won't even turn and look at Lindsay, but somehow has the audacity to talk about Lindsay's miscarriage. It just doesn't make any sense. But what it does remind me of, and I'm going to get into this, it reminds me that Paige is not her own person. It reminds me that Paige is, it reminds me that Paige is dating exactly the kind of person that she is. Don't forget that Craig on Seasons of of Southern Charm initially came in hard as a misogynist against Catherine. And we'll get back to that. But Paige says Luke didn't have a miscarriage. And it's like, Yeah, Luke didn't have a miscarriage because he can't, but that doesn't mean that Luke can't get a girl pregnant. Like, did he? Did Luke get a a girl pregnant and cause a miscarriage? We don't know. Did he put a girl in a situation where she had to have an abortion? We don't know that. So therefore, we're going to act like when Luke taps as many trees or whatever or women or whatever as he wants, that it doesn't have as many consequences. It just... All of it is so fucked up and it's so crazy because all of this is happening at the same time as all the shit that's going on in our country. And again, it just reminds me that even in this group of liberal, open-minded, sex-positive people, you still have people who are equating these two situations. That Lindsay can't for some reason go around and hook up and have fun with whoever she wants because she is capable of having a baby. And she's capable of having a miscarriage. Whereas Luke can do whatever he wants because it doesn't matter where he puts his dick and what his dick causes. It it just, it's so fucked up. It made me so angry. Amanda says, we weren't trying to slut shame you. We just wanted to make sure you're okay, which Maya co-signs. But Danielle points out that it's one thing to ask if she's okay. And it's another thing to have multiple conversations about Lindsay in a way that is very slut shamey. And they call Paige out on that as well. Paige says something about, I don't care who you deem worthy to be inside of you. And I, as soon as she said that, I was like, okay, again, this is why I know Paige is an inauthentic phony person. Paige is now Craig. She is now Craig. 
can we talk about what a shitty couple name they have? Because, like, later on they get into, like, get into, like, how cute, like, Carl and Lindsay are. And, like, Paige, Paige thought that she and Craig were the A couple of Bravo. But even their, like, couple name is horrible. It's either Crage or Prague. <laughs> it's horrible. But when she said that, I was like, okay, I hear Craig's voice. I hear Craig. I hear the Craig who used to slut shame Catherine for years and years and years. The same Craig who slut shamed Madison. This is Craig Conover speaking. That is what he would say. This is like even this brothel shit. It's just the way that the way that Paige views Lindsay versus how she viewed her best friend Hannah is very interesting. The only reason Paige views Lindsay this way is because Craig views Lindsay that way. And the reason why Craig views Lindsay that way is because Lindsay hooks up with Austin. And Craig has very, very specific views about women who hook up with his friends. He always looks down on them. He calls them horrible names. He's a real fucking weirdo about it. But all of that whole interaction to me felt very Craig Conover. Lindsay is another hilarious person i can understand why women get so frustrated with Lindsay because or people in general because Lindsay has an event a pop-off if you will and then she comes back and she says she doesn't know why there's tension between her and her and Paige. (laughs) she's like i thought everything was fine we were having a great time carl points out that like really sweet moment they had at prom and Paige says that you know i have no idea why You know, you would think that it's wild that you think that we would be okay. But Carl does point out that Paige does shit behind closed doors, which is like what we said. She likes to sit on the couch with her friends and whisper to them. She doesn't actually want to be honest. And when she has to be honest, she becomes a sourpuss weirdo where she can't even make eye contact with the person. Paige says something to Carl about, okay, I get that you want to defend her the whole time. And it's like, okay, what if he does? What if Carl wants to defend his girlfriend? It's not a big deal. Carl points out that Paige has never had a boyfriend come on the show until Craig, and she's never brought anything authentic to the show. And I think this is why Carl keeps defending Lindsay. People are coming hard on Lindsay for being honest about who she is. Who she is is somebody who wanted to talk about a horrible thing that happened to her involving her reproductive health. She talks about wanting to get through that and enjoy herself she talks about hooking up with all kinds of guys she talks about the mistakes that she makes she yelled at a man about a sandwich i mean she let's not forget was a couple seasons ago ever comes to a a summer house party she hooks up with him like in the backyard and then later like an hour later she breaks up with him i mean this is who Lindsay's always been and i get that that's why carl wants to defend her it's that he is actually is actually honest about who she is as a person And he points out to Paige that you've never had a boyfriend come on the show until Craig and you've never really brought anything to the show. And Paige has the nerve to say, what did you do all summer? At this point, I did write in all caps in my notes, Carl's brother died last year and he grieved that and he grieved it again this year with his mother and he's done it all on camera, the entire thing. He's done his sobriety journey on camera. It's insane that she would say, what have you done? Carl has actually shown a lot of himself first two seasons he was working for like a dental whitening company and he had yellow teeth i mean i know that that's really petty of me but it's true that's how real carl has been carl's been so real that every season he comes in and presents himself as a new and improved person because he knows that the year before he was a piece of shit he keeps trying to at least change and be honest about the fact that he was a piece of shit you know but anyway back to Lindsay. they ask her what did you think of what was said behind your back and she says obviously the brothel comment was nuts And Paige tries to clarify it, but again, it kind of just like puts, she puts it on this flip-flop between Austin and and Sierra and Lindsay. And I don't know, it doesn't really make sense why she would then call it a brothel. It doesn't make any sense. Luke calls out that Paige did the same thing with Andrea and Craig, where she hooked up with two different people. And Paige is like, no, it wasn't the same because I wasn't sleeping with Andrea and Craig didn't live in our house. It didn't make it, that didn't make any sense either. Lindsay wasn't sleeping with Austin and the dudes she hooked up with didn't live in her house. So what do the two things have to do with each other, Paige? Nothing. Lindsay says she hasn't slept with Austin in four years. And later, Sierra says that Austin hooked up with Lindsay in Montauk. Apparently on the internet, Lindsay clarified that. She did go party with 
Austin this the weekend after her birthday in Montauk, and they fell asleep in the same bed. They slept in the same room, but they didn't actually fuck each other. I guess that clarification needed to be made because Sierra is still holding that against Lindsay. But anyway, we get into what exactly Carl did, which is his sobriety journey page. Uh, Carl thankfully clocks Paige for that about being such a bitch and Paige automatically becomes the greatest victim in the world. She tries to gaslight and be like, it's so rude of you to even say that I'm coming at your sobriety. Like that's so messed up. Well, you did, Paige. You did what you did. You need to own the shit that you say. You are being a sourpuss and you're saying fucked up things and you need to own the fact that you are a fucked up person. Anyway, Andy calls out that Paige's body language is insane and Paige says that no one on the couch likes her and she's very uncomfortable. And Paige goes into full Karen mode. She says, Carl's been yelling at me this whole time and I never even had beef with Carl. What are you talking about? You're just mad at Carl because he's really nice to the person that you don't like. What do you want Carl to do? Not defend his girlfriend? That's insane. Paige says she won't look at Lindsay in the eyes because she's uncomfortable. And then she explains the hierarchy in the group of newbies versus the OGs and the current divide and why people gravitate towards Paige. This didn't explain anything to me. Like, it does not explain anything. Lindsay is being nice to Paige, and I think this is the same reason why Sierra popped off later. When Lindsay doesn't give these women the reaction that they expect from her, they lose their fucking mind. They don't know what to do with it. They have no idea how to deal with it. But talking about this hierarchy of OGs versus like season one people versus new people, Danielle was not on season one, guys. Danielle, for like... 60% of her time on this show has just been riding the LIRR. And she's really good friends with these people. She actually hit it off with Lindsay before Amanda did. And I'm not going to say Lindsay doesn't ice people out because I 100% believe that she does. But Paige is the person who brought, uh, what was her name? Julia? Julie? Jules. Jules on the show and iced her out. Wasn't Jules Paige's friend? And she iced Jules out. And I have a theory about why Jules got iced out by Paige. Do you guys remember the season that Jules was on? Who did she hook up with during a party? She hooked up with Craig. And I know that at the time, Paige had a boyfriend, I think. I don't remember. But I think that there's something to say about that. About why suddenly everybody started icing out Jules. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. But anyway, if Paige wants to talk about how new people are treated versus old people, Paige purposely iced out a new person. So that shit doesn't fucking make any sense. They were all awful to Jules. And so it's not this thing where like, oh, nobody is nice to the new people. This That's got nothing to do with it, Paige. You're just mad that you can't whisper to your friends about the people that you don't like. So then they get into the Sierra and Carl thing, this flirtation and why they didn't pursue it. And Carl says that he could always sense that there was an interest, but because it was just more of a fling, he was sober and he was able to figure out that that's not really something he wanted. They asked Lindsay about Sierra talking about wanting to fuck Carl. And then that kind of segues into this conversation about Carl's dick. And then they're like, Lindsay, can you confirm if Carl's dick is big? (sighs) Again, this is just like weird old creepy gym teacher Andy's way of talking about, you know, the students' dongs. He just loves to talk about body parts. And I'm like, pretty sure this is an HR violation because I think Andy Cohen signs your paychecks, guys. And we come back, it goes to commercial. We come back, it's like between the commercial and them Andy being like, and we're back. But <laughs> Carl says he wants to eat Lindsay's legs and Luke is spit shining his pants, which I just thought was endearing. Um, they get to this like weird adulting segment. They ask Danielle if she moved to Charleston. We find out she didn't. Nobody cares. They ask Maya about her cookies and apparently it's got a backlight of 10,000 people. And then they ask if Luke and Maya are dating. (laughs) And Luke says, oh, you know, I should clarify because I guess when I sit this way with people with my arm around them, it, it makes people think that maybe we are dating. And then I was like, oh no, did Arthi and I spread the rumor that Maya and Luke were dating. And then I remembered our podcast is not that important. It's or popular that 
we would be the ones to spread that rumor. I think it's because I remember they were on Watch What Happens Live and Carl, um, sorry, Luke was, Luke kind of had his arm around Maya in a way where people thought that they were dating. But they clarified that that is not the case. Maya and Oliver apparently are still longtime friends with benefits. And I just want to point out that Kyle is just the grossest frat boy. He keeps just finding opportunities to put his finger between his thumb and index, you know, the intercourse hand gesture that kids do when they're like, I don't know, 10 or 12. When do boys start doing that? It's weird. Kyle, you're like 47. Stop it. Anyway, they ask Carl if Lindsay is a better kisser than Sierra since Austin said otherwise on Watch What Happens Live. And Carl says Lindsay is the best kisser he's ever had. Then they ask who's getting engaged first. Is it Danielle, Paige, or Lindsay? And Paige says she wants out of this, which is really confusing to me because I feel like every other week there's like a new article about or a video that gets passed around on Instagram of Craig and Paige sitting around talking about their dream weddings and where they want to live and all this stuff. And I'm like, no, you're probably getting engaged. Anyway, Paige says she wants out of it. Um, And then apparently we get into this thing about Danielle. So Danielle apparently... Sierra said somewhere on Watch What Happens, another funny thing, Andy asks these like really loaded questions on Watch What Happens Live. And then at the reunion, he's like, can you believe that you said this on Watch What Happens Live? It's like, well, you you fucking asked the question, Andy. Why did you ask the question? And then you're bringing it up at the reunion. It's like, you don't have to create contact for the reunion. Or I guess maybe you do. I don't know. But they get into this thing about apparently Danielle and Robert fought a lot and they broke up a lot because Sierra said on Watch What Happens Live that she thinks it's very unlikely that Robert and Danielle would get engaged. And apparently it's because they broke up over the summer many, many times. And Danielle denies it. And it's like, while Danielle is sitting there denying it, didn't we get these really, really awkward segments in the season where like, I think it was the finale where Danielle is sitting with Robert and he's like, oh, should we sage this area? Oh, that was our like darkest moment. We fought so much. So it's like, Danielle, you did get into crazy fights with him. Why are you acting like you didn't? Anyway, um, this leads into the Danielle and Sierra segment. Basically, because Sierra said some shit on Watch What Happens Live, Danielle said some shit about Sierra on Watch What Happens Live that she's not fun. And Danielle is asked, was this in retaliation? And she says, no, it wasn't in retaliation. She tried with Sierra and really got nowhere. And Sierra's like, no, neither of us tried and we got nowhere. It's fine. And look, Sierra is frustrating as a person. She's absolutely in the wrong for throwing a glass at this woman's chest and bruising her. I think all those things are legitimate reasons to be mad at Sierra. But... Danielle, Danielle feels to me like she's prior to the glass throw. Danielle feels a lot to me like she fights Lindsay's battles. She really does. I had to think back to, I think it was Danielle's first reunion. It was really sad. It was in like the Watch What Happens Live studio. It was like the saddest reunion, but it was Amanda's first season also. And I remember that it was one of the things that kept coming up was that um, they felt like Amanda was being cut out of the group. Because or Amanda was complaining, Kyle and Amanda are complaining that the girls were mean girling Amanda out of things. And Danielle was one of the people that was like, well, you know, like you have to try to hang out with us. Like you have to like make an effort with us. You have to like try to get close with us. And I feel like she's trying to do the same thing to Sierra. And it's like, look, you can say that Sierra's not fun because she threw a glass at your chest. It doesn't have to be for any other reason. You can say, Sierra, I don't want to be your friend because you threw a glass at me. It doesn't have to be for any other reason. This whole thing of I really try to make an effort with you and I try to be your friend and all that, you didn't. You you may have given a little bit of effort, but you really didn't. I will say that there were a couple of scenes where like Danielle is talking to Sierra about what to do with her career or Sierra is talking to Danielle about it. And Danielle does give Sierra some good advice in that front. So I feel like maybe that was what she was talking about. But I remember even when I would watch those scenes on the show, I'd be like, what is Danielle doing there? Like that is a weird friendship, you know? But anyway, Danielle says that basically she tried with Sierra and got nowhere. Sierra says, no, neither of us tried. And then Danielle says that Sierra isn't an easy person to get to know. And it's like, 
there's also another reason that Danielle could just say, which is there's a massive age difference between us. We are two very different people. And it makes more sense that you would be closer to somebody like Amanda or Paige because they're closer to your age. And Lindsay and I would gravitate more towards each other because we are all closer in age. I don't know why they don't talk about this on the show. It's the most sensible thing, sensible, sensible, sensible thing to be pointing to, right? Is like, yeah, we get along with certain people based on our age. And when we all party, it's really good time. But when we're sober, there's some things that we can talk about with each other that maybe the other group wouldn't understand because of the age difference. And that's okay. But I think also because these are people who are on reality TV, maybe they don't want to bring up or call out the fact that they're old, you know? Anyway, um, we get into Andrea and Lexi and um, <laughs> they say... Despite Andrea having a high success rate with women, he just wanted to be with Lexi. And it's really cute because I guess they are really together. I'm happy for Andrea. Good for him. Sierra's quarter life crisis comes up. We find out about, you know, all the stuff that's going on, whether it was with Austin, her job, her career, all this stuff. Kyle keeps again doing those weird intercourse fingers at any given chance. It's just so gross. But they ask, was Sierra hypocritical about Austin's and the sleeping arrangements. And she says that it's basically like if she would go to Charleston and sleep in Shep's bed. That's how messed up it is if Austin goes and sleeps with Lindsay. I don't see the connection, but okay. Lindsay says that she was just trying to make sure Austin didn't sleep on the couch. (laughs) Again, I agree with, I actually agree with Paige. She is good at the PR because she is really spinning it to be a whole other story. Lindsay says that she didn't think that Sierra was that interested in Carl, or sorry, Sierra was that interested in Austin because she had made out with uh, Carl and also Alex. And so she was like, I just didn't think your eyes were set on Austin. And Sierra says that, you know, that's not true. Everybody in the house knew that I was upset that Austin didn't come up the weekend before. They, I guess the weekend that Craig came when they had that big Kristen Cavallari fight, Austin was supposed to come, but he didn't. And when he didn't come, everybody noticed how sad she was. So everybody got the gist that she was obviously really, really interested in Austin. But again, I think that while everybody understood that she was interested in Austin, it also makes sense that everybody would understand that Austin might have more interest in more interest in Lindsay if he finally agrees to come up for Lindsay's birthday versus coming up just to hang out with Sierra. Do you know what I mean? Sierra says that the whole thing was strategic, and I just don't think that that's ever true. I don't think that Lindsay's that thoughtful. I think Lindsay just does things off the cuff. I don't think she actually thinks these things through. I agree with Carl when he says, like, it's not this, like, diabolical plan that you guys think that Lindsay has. It's really not. But Lindsay says she didn't know how intense the feelings were, which I call bullshit on, obviously. Um, But uh, they also point out that Austin didn't come the weekend before because Carl called him to tell him that you need to not come because it makes you look thirsty to try to be on three shows, which is true. And I do want to point out that if Austin thought it was more important for him to not look thirsty than it was for him to come and see Sierra then maybe it's time again, Sierra, for you to just take the L on that, you know? Maya says she's shocked that multiple women are fighting over Austin, which, duh, obviously. And um, we find out that apparently Austin cussed out Maya. It wasn't just that she thought he was what I call a disgruntled octopus, but also that he apparently cussed out Maya and said that he belonged more in the house than Maya did. And I'm like, again... Maya, if Sierra's your friend and this is the guy that she's pining over, then why aren't you guys fueling Sierra to be more angry at Austin? I I still don't understand that. I don't. But I guess at some point Amanda points out that it wasn't just, it wasn't that they all didn't agree that Austin is a piece of shit. It was just that they felt like Lindsay was dismissing Sierra and that is what was then fueling everybody's anger. It was how Lindsay was treating Sierra knowing how Sierra felt about Austin, I guess. And they felt like she should have had more respect or care for Sierra in that moment. I do think that there is more to that, and I'll get to it in a minute. They asked Sierra whether or not she was a hypocrite for hooking up with Austin, despite knowing that Lindsay 
was in love with Austin. And she says no because she she had asked if it was okay. But they cut to the footage and she didn't ask Lindsay if it was okay. She asked Austin if it was okay. That doesn't clarify anything. She asked Austin, is it okay? Can I take a step back? It's very much possible that Austin said the same exact thing to Lindsay. He said to Lindsay, look, I'm not, he actually, we know that he said it on camera. He's not really interested in Sierra in that way. He can hook up with whoever he wants. He told Lindsay that. And again, in all this, Austin is the culprit. But anyway, Amanda says that um, they ask Amanda, was Lindsay getting back at Sierra for Vermont? And Amanda says, you know, I don't know if that was what she was trying to do, but I do think that you can do whatever you want, hook up with whoever you want. But if you hurt somebody, you should be able to address that and you should be able to take some accountability and understand and have some empathy for the person who was hurt, which I was like, okay, that's not terrible, but like you don't have to be managing those people's feelings. I th- Again, I think it's between Sierra and Lindsay. I just don't understand why the whole house has to get involved in it, you know? And I, and I say the same about Danielle. Danielle did not de- have to be jumping in that fight with Sierra and Lindsay. I really don't. It should have always been between Sierra and Lindsay. Anyway, Carl again tells the group that it's not a premeditated attempt on Lindsay's part to make Sierra miserable. <laughs> Lindsay does not help herself because then she goes into this whole thing about like (laughs) she wasn't the one that was chasing her around herself around the pool she's like I wasn't chasing me around the pool and I wasn't making out with myself yeah yeah you weren't making out with yourself you were making out with Austin and I get that you're saying that he was making out with you but you were also making out with him Lindsay you can't just be like oh he chased around and so I just let him take me what (laughs) What are you talking about? Lindsay says that, you know, when Danielle finally broke it down for her, she understood why Sierra was hurt. She understood why it was hurtful to Sierra. And she says I she had already apologized to Sierra before the dinner. But everyone says that the way that Lindsay apologized was a classic non-apology. Specifically, Amanda really gets into this. And I agree. I agree that there is a difference between I'm sorry I hurt your feelings and I'm sorry your feelings got hurt. However, I would argue that when you say I'm sorry your feelings got hurt and I'm sorry for the part I played in that, I think that that does take some accountability, although it is still very vague, Lindsay. Andrea's Italian dinner is addressed, and obviously they really get into the Sierra and Lindsay situation. But they ask Kyle, does he agree with Sierra that Lindsay gets to say what she wants without consequence? And Kyle says something that, again, doesn't make any sense because I'm not sure if Carl is, Kyle is even sober enough to be having this conversation. He's like drunk and high off of spray tan and booze and probably tons of coke. But Kyle says something like, even when you're right against Lindsay, you lose. Which I'm not sure answers the question that was asked. But anyway, Lindsay says that we've all been hurt by each other in this house. And Amanda says, well, when the girls try to approach you, specifically when the women in the house try to approach you, you're dismissive and your tone is horrible. I take issue with that because Lindsay has fought plenty with the men in this house. They do tell her that her tone is horrible and that she's so rude and dismissive. And this is where Danielle chimes in and says, well, Sierra, you're not approachable either. I want Danielle to shut up and sit down. I really do. Because I don't think that she's helping the situation in the same way that I don't think that it helps when Paige chimes in or Amanda chimes in. It does not really help when Danielle chimes in to fight Lindsay's battles. It's weird. Again, she makes it about about herself and she says, you know, I tried to listen to you when we were all having that conversation at the dinner. I tried to listen. I tried to listen. And Maya says something in the midst of the back and forth. She says, well, I'd be offended by your reaction to Danielle. But they get into this like wine glass situation and Sierra does take accountability. She says that she let her emotions get the best of her and she shouldn't have done it and it's not an excuse. But she felt dismissed and disregarded because she felt like when Lindsay was silent and sm- it was that she was smug and she felt like Lindsay wasn't listening. Again, Danielle jumps into the conversation. She says the conversation was going nowhere. And Lindsay points out, I was looking right at you, Sierra. I was looking right at you. 
Carl, being the only sober person likely in the room at the time, points out that you guys just didn't get the reaction you were looking for out of Lindsay and you flipped out, which Sierra admits. She actually admits to it and she agrees. Luke points out that Paige stoked the fire and God, I fucking hate Paige. Paige says that she would do it again. She says she would do it again because she wanted Sierra to be able to speak her mind because she felt like Sierra had been dismissed this whole time. And now I feel like there's a layer of this conversation, this entire fight that got maybe taken out of the show because I did hear, I don't know where it was. Maybe on Watch What Happens. Maya said that there was a lot else that happened during that dinner that wasn't shown. And Paige keeps saying that Sierra felt dismissed. She felt silenced and dismissed and she felt ignored. I think that this kind of ties to the initial race conversation she, they had in the house. If you remember the first conversation, this race conversation that they had in the house at the beginning of the season was that Maya felt dismissed and ignored. She felt dismissed and ignored and it was really, really triggering for her, right? The fact that Paige tells Sierra to get go and fuck this bitch up, right? She's saying that she's, she did that because she felt like Sierra was dismissed and ignored. I feel like this is bad. This is how not to be an ally. I feel like Paige heard Sierra say, I feel dismissed by Lindsay and I feel ignored by Lindsay and I feel like nobody cares about my feelings, right? And Paige thought to herself, well, these black women talked in the beginning of the season about feeling dismissed and ignored and everybody should have listened and everybody should understand. And the fact that nobody does means that we need to make sure that they're being advocated for. And you know what, Sierra, you have all the right to go in that room and say and do whatever you want. No, I think what Paige should have done is actually sit and try to have a sober conversation with these people. What it didn't help is Paige riling Sierra up to a point where they made Sierra think that Lindsay had some sort of ulterior motive for why she was dismissing and ignoring Sierra. I have a feeling that some of this may have come out in the conversation at the dinner, and I have a feeling that maybe that's why Danielle got so worked up. You know, Danielle starts to even get worked up during the reunion when she's talking about it. And she says that women of color, that we as women of color, as people of color should not be behaving this way. And Sierra's not disagreeing with any of that. She agrees that she got too emotional. But I think that there's something else, like a layer of of something that happened at that dinner or a dynamic in the house that we're not seeing. And I don't think that it helps Sierra that the only person she has on her side to help sort out the relationship with Lindsay is Paige. Like, I wonder what would have happened if Sierra went to Danielle and said, Danielle, I feel ignored by Lindsay and I feel really hurt by Lindsay and I don't know how to approach it with her. I feel like it would have been a different conversation, but something about the fact that she said to Paige, I feel dismissed and Paige said, go and fuck her up, just feels like like a bad just it's like a bad you know it's like those those ultra feminist bad takes of like you know of like going too hard in one direction the wrong way where you are now not helping you're actually making things worse you know it's just like it's bad allyship 101 and maybe that's just me speculating but something about the way that Paige said that Sierra felt dismissed felt to me like maybe this was Paige's way of making sure that You know, she did her part as a white woman to make sure that these black women didn't feel dismissed. And and her part was to encourage the black woman to act out. And I don't, that's not the solution. That was never the solution. And I think maybe that's why Danielle is getting so worked up of being like, you know, we should, we as women of color should be acting that way, which like, again, like the respectability politics of it all is like annoying, but it's, I guess it's a reality of our lives. So I can't sit there and say that that's annoying that Danielle is trying to put them on them, but Danielle lives and breeds it, right? So that's her perspective. But the fact of the matter is the initial fight was always, the argument was always between Lindsay and Sierra. It was always between Lindsay and Sierra. 
And Paige encourages Sierra to go and fuck up Lindsay and embarrass Lindsay. When Lindsay doesn't give Sierra the reaction that she's looking for, Sierra starts to go in harder on Lindsay. And Danielle steps in as Lindsay's good girlfriend, as her loyal soldier. She puts her face where it doesn't belong. Sierra throws a glass, which is absolutely fucked up, which again, she's apologized for, right? But then for Danielle to start going into this whole thing of, I've built this hatred for you, I just want to point out that that's edited really weird. I don't trust Bravo anymore. The way that that's edited is really weird. When she's crying about it, it's edited really weird. She says, I really wish that you would have reached out to me when you saw that playback. And Sierra says, I just thought that it wouldn't be well received, which is fucked up, by the way. Why would you think that that wouldn't be well received, Sierra? Like, of course it would have been. You saw yourself doing something horrible to a woman that you live with and work with. And you never thought to pick up the phone and say, sorry, that's just weird. That's just like a weird, bizarre, immature move, you know? And while I think that Sierra is absolutely wrong for the way that she did everything in this, I also found it really strange that Danielle was like making it such a big deal. And I like Danielle a lot. I really do. I really, really enjoy her a lot. But watching this reunion just felt to me like, again, I feel like you're not getting the reaction you want out of Lindsay. So you're going to get a reaction maybe out of Danielle. And is that on behalf of Lindsay? I'm not sure. It just felt really like, I don't know, out of place to me. And it feels to me like there are bits and pieces of this dynamic that we haven't gotten. And I don't think any of it points to like, somebody's racist or there's a microaggression happening but I think that there is a dynamic here of people um and who they tend to gravitate to and how that is received I think that there's something to say about when you're two people of color in the room right whether it's in this situation a Latina and a black woman and you choose the white people that you associate yourself with and then your white people that you associate yourself with have beef, it makes a weird dynamic for you as the minorities in the room to figure out how to defend that or how to be around that. I don't know. I I have to think through more about breaking that down, I think. But there's a lot of chatter on the internet right now about, you know, is Danielle low-key being, um, you know, does she have some sort of prejudice against Sierra? And is that why she's reacting this way? And is that why she's so upset? And is that why she's painting Sierra to be so violent? I don't think Danielle is painting Sierra to be violent. Sierra behaved in a violent way. Sierra's actions speak for themselves. I think what Danielle is saying is that she wishes Sierra was kinder to her. And I think actually Sierra might be saying the same thing to Danielle. I think that they're both wishing that they had a relationship with each other as the minorities in the room, and it's difficult for them to wrap their heads around why they might not. And I think that, I don't think either of it has to do with their own race or how they view the other race. I think it has to do with where they feel like they fit in among the white people. It's this strange insecurity that we sometimes end up having as the minorities in the room and how we navigate around the white folks in the room. And I have to unpack a little bit more of that, but I don't, I didn't get the sense that Danielle was coming at Sierra through some sort of like low key racist lens. I really don't. I didn't see it. Um, But I do think that there is a race dynamic in how sometimes minorities have to even navigate with each other when it comes to being in a room with white people or being in a space with white people. Um, but I don't think that in any any of this got better by Paige interjecting or any of it got better by Danielle even putting herself into it. I think ultimately this would have all been fine if it was just between Lindsay and Sierra. And Lindsay, again, did not give them the reaction that she was looking for, Sierra was looking for, or that Paige was looking for. And that drives them crazy. It's driving them crazy right then on the couch that Lindsay's being so nice. They hate that. They want her to yell at them. And when she doesn't, it makes them angry. Um, That's it. These are all my thoughts about Summer House. Um, I will be dropping an episode tomorrow night 
covering, I said OC, by the way, in the last episode, Beverly Hills, not OC, Beverly Hills and New Jersey. Um, I haven't watched the Beverly Hills premiere yet because I was away, but um, we're now true crime, basically, investigators, it sounds like. (laughs) Sounds like every season on Beverly Hills, a new crime will be presented. The Bravo docket will have a lot more to cover. (laughs) But we will all become, you know, uh, true crime analysts, I guess. Um, So I will catch you then. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.